we know that from the experience, uh, things that happen to us that were just meant to be for our own experience, the chance of it happening seemed timing wise, you know, to get the message or right. it almost appears as though everything's preempted, already constructed in a way that follows a certain path. My name's Eric. I was a MFA student from 2013 to 2015. I was part of the first group of students to move into the new studios in the Audain Art Center, where Bo would eventually move into his studio as well. I had seen him around on campus and seen him talk at the Belkin, but I'd never met him. The first time I actually talked to him was when he joined in on a critique for our MFA seminar, which was my first critique at UBC. He explained my work to me in terms of what he saw and what it made him feel, and gave me an honest critique. At the end of the critique, he asked about my guitar, and asked if I played, and invited me over to his studio to see his guitar. He showed me his guitar, and then he played a few songs for me, and I was blown away by the impact that these songs had on me. The combination of the slide guitar and Bo's deep voice created this sound that I'd never never experienced before. This emotion in music, it changed the way I looked at playing guitar and music in general. And I remember leaving his studio saying, damn, I want to jam with Bo someday. I remember when I first met Bo at the MFA welcoming ceremony, and it was sort of a casual party and um, he and I started talking and I had moved from LA and I'm an impatient person anyway so I came in with the kind of like okay here we go you know (laughs) like sort of with a politely listening attitude and impatience and then he I realized partway through While he was talking, he started telling me um, a story that I don't remember the details, I remember the gist of it in my own way, but there was a point in our conversation or when he was telling me the story that suddenly I realized he wasn't, it wasn't a normal exchange in a social exchange where you're just kind of saying, hello, I'm not here to harm you or this is who I am. It was, he was actually trying to communicate something very, genuine about life and about what I was about to experience and as soon as that moment came that I realized that he said now that I've got your attention (laughs) he knew the exact second that I was actually present and with him there and he was able to communicate with me Uh, my name is Matt Browning I'm an MFA student at UBC and I met Bo through UBC. I took his class on the potlatch in the fall of 2015. And it was very interesting to think about the way that his mass carving seemed always in service of the production of the potlatch. Um, And so there was a way that taking that class added a different dimension to what he was doing on the fourth floor and the way that he was working with his apprentices. Um, Because the potlatch seems like it or is such a significant social and ceremonial space, um, the nature of the social uh, activity that took place while he and his apprentices were carving became a really important thing for me to think about. The way that making things material production and social interaction and friendship are not exclusive things but are kind of they support and reinforce each other um i think often in a in an art program like this we are trained to to question work or to question like how work can um can make us us uh, like alienated or or feel separated from other people and and 
when I was encountering Bo's mo method of working, it just completely threw that into question for me. Um, because work and carving and production and and like being together were all the same thing. And so uh, it made me rethink the way that I was making my work. It made me really uh, begin to emphasize uh, my own ability or my own um, inclination to work around others and to not sort of self-isolate as an artist. Um, and so it, in general, I just, I think that it, it had like a, you know, his presence and, and the way that he went about teaching his class and um, and inviting some of the students up to, to witness a potlatch uh, just had a really dramatic effect on the way that I made work moving forward. Um, and so in a lot of ways, I think that the, the twists and turns that my work took while in the program were the most dramatically affected by the studio environment that Bo kept. I started popping into Bo's studio more and more regularly. And a few weeks later, one day when I popped in, Bo invited me to carve a mask with him. The next day I came back with a stack of drawings and we sorted through them. We chose one that we both thought would make a good mask and he dug into his wood pile and picked out a block. Picked up the chainsaw and roughed something out and drew the center line and kind of sent me on my way. And for about the next year, I worked on that mask with him and Cole. And I really took my time with it and Bo gave me a hard time about how long it was taking sometimes. Uh, but I, I kept drawing it out because I didn't want it to end. And uh, so I just kept carving and carving and it got more and more complex and smaller and smaller. And finally one day Bo put the pressure on. And uh, so I stayed late that night and carved and carved with him and Cole and painted the thing up. And then the next day went to his opening at the Bill Reed Gallery and he had snuck my mask onto the wall. and. I walked in to the opening and was just stopped dead in my tracks and I saw my mask on the wall and Bo lifted me to a height that I never knew was even possible. Uh, just to be involved, for him to believe in that way is something that I can't even explain. Hi. My name is Benjamin J. Allard. I was a friend and a student of Beau. I cannot be with you here today, but I would like to share some words about who Beau was for me. As a friend, I will miss his witty humor, although I know he will continue to listen. As an artist, the studio will for a long time continue to vibrate from his passion and the echoes he produced will forever carry inspiration. As a teacher, we will feel the absence of the stories he told us so generously, but we will continue to share his memory from our own voice. As a thinker, I will continue to look for his advice in difficult moments. But I will keep my vision clear, as he told me many times, and remember the confidence he gave me to focus on what I know is right. As a Hamatsa and as a chief, we still have a lot to learn from his connection with the supernatural world. But I know that he will continue dancing and singing for us to heal us in this world. As a father, a brother, and as a son, he was loving and affectionate. He understood that everything was connected and extended his care to everyone. I am fortunate to still feel it today. As a man, and as a human, by being humble and by welcoming everyone for who they were, he was able to touch those who met him. 
His memory will be for me a reminder to recognize the dignity of everyone and of all things and to respect all my relations. Thank you. I'm just so um, incredibly grateful and hope I can emulate on some tiny level the depth of love and acceptance that he treated me with every exchange and his ability to know your state of mind and to know what you needed to hear and just the kindness and intelligence and 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 power he was a powerful person who was able to treat people with love and total kindness and just so much intelligence and care and just so incredibly fair my mom would really loved first nations art and we had it on the wall and it really influenced my becoming an artist and and what art how art functioned to me and um it ends up where i just my sister just unpacked all my mom's prints and one of those prints was Bo Dick and I mean this was you know I grew up in Connecticut in New England this was years before anyone had moved and my family moved west or anything so just knowing that he was there that whole time all through my teenage years and then suddenly after so much time as a returning student deciding to come to be here and it's the first year we had our first year in UBC together just is pretty incredible to have had to have Bo in my life and to have him as a person who I can always think of when in any situation and remember how he navigated and interacted with the world. He understood where I was coming from and he helped me to understand where he had come from. He introduced me to his culture and to many great people uh, from his home. And he shared with me stories, old and new, and he always allowed me to ask questions, and he was generous with his answers. I felt like Bo was always planting seeds, like he would give you some little phrase that would somehow change everything. Uh, the way you were looking at a situation or a piece of art or even an event in life uh, and he had this way of understanding and communicating that and he would instill something in you that would blossom later and I know that for the most part uh, many of those seeds have yet to, to blossom and so in that respect his, his light will shine on in all of us as we carry forward. And that's inspiring to me, and, and I'm grateful to have been a part of it. Um, I'm grateful to have come from where I did, and to know no one and be accepted into this community and, and feel like part of something, something much larger.